starting now. Like, thank you, Christian, for coming on and time after before getting all the started, we've had to work through techn technology yeah. issues, and we got something situated so we can now we're now in this interview and came across something i i i if, if you listen to something an, another interview that i i just did i'm going to be releasing that on monday you can for anyone new to these this line of question that i'm i'm going to open with you can go back and basis for I, I pretty much saw this clip on from youtube ted talk about what your purpose and finding your purpose in f five minutes i know usually it takes a little longer than that but the yeah. simple it's simple it's five minutes five questions and starting out with you who are you and we'll start there. Who are you? Can you come up with first? Oh, you're on your podcast? So, um, I'm Christian Hudspeth, and I'm an actor in the Houston area. I answer the first question, who I am. And the second one, really, right? And this, this question number two is, what do you do? Right. So primarily in the film industry, I'm an actor, but I also try to count myself in as a filmmaker as well. Now, I haven't, like, I'm not a like, Hollywood actor or anything like that, but I've only been doing it for roughly about a year, even though I've been acting a little bit since I was, like, in eighth grade, and that's been... How old am I now? 19, so 11 years. But eighth grade. I was not eight in eighth grade. But yeah, I'm an actor in the Houston area. And I also study media production over at the University of Houston, learning like the technical side of film. And on the outside, outside of school, I take um, private coaching lessons with a local acting teacher. So that's been really, really informative. So eleven years and still, you, you still and, eleven. And... Yeah, eleven years. No, I haven't been acting for eleven years. I was just really bad at math a second ago, because I was trying to like. Yeah, I said okay. I was in eighth grade and I'm nineteen. And like, oh, eight and nineteen subtract eight. That's eleven years. No, that's not. No, I've only been acting like professionally for like a year. Um, as I started back in March, but I just remember in eighth grade, I did a play. That's it. I just did a play and it was really, really bad. I have a, oh, I had such an embarrassing moment in that play because during one of our performances, I completely forgot my lines and there's like, I can talk on and on about how stage acting is completely different from film acting because it's a big difference, but most actors do get started out on the stage and technically I guess I did too but my first performance they teach you in theater that whenever you forget a line like in an actual performance with a real audience you just improvise that way you never even know that you messed up audience doesn't know they don't catch it that's not what I did Instead, all I did was I stared at the crowd for 30 seconds and it felt like 30 hours. And you feel this like hit drop in you and you're like, what I'm doing. So I'm just staring at like a blank audience and everyone knew that, uh, it still like gives me chills, but it was really, it's an experience that every stage actor will probably run into at some point, forgetting their lines and then staring blankly at the audience like a deer in headlights literally the lights were on me so that you you got you got your starting point and you, uh, and that's really important for anything that anyone does 
Yes. And it shows that how much I was paying attention. Yeah, I'm I'm a math person. I was just <laughs> when I was taking eleven years, but the next question of the of these five to open this, who do you, I should say, who do you act for? Who do you do this for? Everyone. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for other people. A lot of actors will say they just like entertaining people. And honestly, that's part of my answer. I like entertaining people. I like telling stories. And it's interesting how stories can be told in many different ways. Um, like a book is fun. So you read it, you get to interpret the story of how you imagine the characters operating in their setting. Um, if you're looking at a film or watching a film, you're getting to see somebody's interpretation of it and that can inspire you, can educate you. It can just show you a lot of different perspectives. So I think that's really interesting. That's why I do it why I want to continue to do it and just tell different stories. So I think that one of the best ways to learn is through stories. Interactive. It's, people can relate to it. The real world examples. I mean, sometimes. Obviously we don't have like clowns, like demon clowns running around in real life, but it's interesting. Just curious, did so, you yeah, listen to any of my people. Up, up previous episodes? <laughs> Just, I listened to some. Did, uh, Why did I reference the end? Because you that was kind of touching in on one of my questions at the end, like I do the the as part of the unknown questions. <laughs> did I reference something? Well, I mean, it's not that it was a bad thing, but it's like it's like oh, you listened to my stuff before. Sounds like <laughs> it's a good thing, very good thing. <laughs> What do you think people want or need from you as an actor, entertainer in entertainment industry? Well, touching back on what I said previously, when you are an actor, you're doing it probably to entertain people. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm a, a cultural icon and I have the ability to shape entire global culture, but I do believe that film does do that. And I believe I can be a part of it. I don't think I'm going to be like at the top of the pedestal. I'm leading the charge. This is what our new culture is. No, I'm not going to be that type of person. Um, I can't really name anyone that is. But when people watch a film, they watch it because they want to escape reality for a little bit, or they want to just like look at a different perspective on something. They just want to, I guess, they just feel something that's not, that can't be felt in real life, like an action-packed movie. It's intense. You get amped up. I mean, you're not going to get amped up going... I don't know, like a nine to five office job or something. Unless, I mean, that's your thing. But yeah, I and, think people uh, watch because they just want to be entertained. And then the last of these questions and what is the change people will have will see in themselves after they come across something that you've done or will do in the future? What What is a change that maybe you can expect? Well, if an actor has done their job, if they can successfully invoke an emotional response in somebody, and if a film can invoke an emotional response that sticks, with the person like for a long time afterwards, maybe even life changing, then that is a very good actor. It's a very good director. Everyone that was involved in the film has done their job and they've created a masterpiece. Very, very difficult to do that. And you definitely need a lot of experience or a lot of luck 
in order to be able to convey that towards your audience. But I hope as an actor to one day be able to do that is to let somebody go away with a um, strong emotional reaction to it. And ideally, I'd like it to be good. Like, I don't want someone to be scarred for life from like a horror film I do or something like that, which is something that somebody can remember and then they can relate to. Say, for example, like, I know a lot of LGBT people were very moved by the film Love, Simon. Like, it stuck with them because they can relate to it a lot. I want to do that for somebody as well. I want to be someone's inspiration or I want to just help somebody. I want them to use my work or the work of somebody I feel strongly, like, uh, very passionate about. And I want them to be able to say, like, I use this as an example in my life to describe how I feel about something. So that's just one of many options as what people to take away from films. What are you excited about today? And going on anything that you're So let's see. So I cannot hear you, you even know what happened. Uh -oh. Does it mean I I can still hear you? I think we ran into an audio trouble because I can't hear you anymore. I don't know if you can hear me, though. I can still hear you. You can. That's really strange. Let's see here. How about now? Uh, trying to talk. I'm talking. It sounds like the onboard speaker is back. So I can hear myself through. Now I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me now? Now, now it's back. It's back, but we are on a really bad speaker. Speakers. You turned it off. Now it sounds like it's back. Okay. Hopefully that fixes things. I think you said that they're low on battery. I think that may be. All right, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. I don't know what's happening because I can't hear you out of my speakers on my headset anymore. Hello. Hello. Let's see here. All right. Let's go back old unreliable. Ugh. All right, let's see. All right, so I think for the duration, we should probably just go with this. I guess I'm gonna, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, sounds better. And I'll just, I'll just kill, leave it going live for now on YouTube, but I'll kill that and I'll- Yeah, apologies about this. that. <laughs> I knew it was probably gonna run into that at some point. I think if you, you mentioned it, I, I hope the batteries, I think the battery or was, I think it was because, then. yeah, the batteries in that life are now. Well, we got through the first part of the question, so that's good. So it's not yeah. too confusing. And I just edit out all that other stuff in between. I was going yes. into what are you excited about today? What you're doing before I'm quarantine excited. stuff happened? Oh, yeah. 
we are in a COVID-19 crisis at the moment, which is very unfortunate. Um, that being said, that doesn't mean I'm not excited about anything. I usually get excited about immediate things and then long-term things. Right now, I'm really excited about lunch. Very, very hungry. I think I might like a Chick-fil-A or something. It's amazing. But like long-term, that's like what the answer you're looking for is. Long-term, I'm really excited about the future in film. I am very excited about this next semester at school because I'm finally taking a single cam production class. And that is straight up using good, good quality equipment to film a short film with. Um, for the longest time, whenever I try to make my own short films, well, my own short films, they're literally like really, really bad, like YouTube sketches, but I've just been having to use this, my little camera DSLR camera. But with this, this class I'm taking up next semester with a really, really, really good professor named Keith Houck, teaches over at the University of Houston. Um, single cam, you get to use good quality cameras like a, what's a good example, like a red camera. Those are really good. I've uh, actually shot a film, the first film, I believe, Wolves with a red camera. And our cinematographer is extremely, extremely good. Great angles, great lighting and everything. It's impeccable. And I can't wait to use it, learn more about that. As well as my other classes too, like an introduction into motion pictures. I'm going to take some dance classes and try and see if I can become a triple threat at some point. Right now I got the acting down, but <laughs> now I have to see about ballet and jazz and then maybe singing, maybe. We'll see about that. You mentioned, is you think it's better to have, I uh, hear myself again. You have the onboard speakers set. I have just speakers, headphones with this. Can you, Maybe. Can you set the, it's gone now. Okay. So moving from there, you mentioned being a triple threat. You think it's better to have one focus and then have that as your main expertise that you want to focus on to get better at. And then as you move from there to then invest in the other side stuff l later on, or you, you think it's better to have everything all at once? I think it's definitely an asset to you and benefits you if you have multiple um, feet in multiple ponds. Um, generally, though, I think it is also the safest and smartest way to hone in and definitely focus on one craft because in the film industry, acting is just one small portion. And even these small portions branch off in many different directions. When it comes to acting, you can be really good at stage acting, you can be really good at film acting and then even film acting that branches off. Are you good at being in comedy? Are you good at being in drama or suspense? Because comedy and film is not going to be the same as comedy and theater. And that's just acting. Dancing is another thing. Dancing on stage is different than dancing in film, even though sometimes they do like overlap and sometimes they are the same. Same thing with singing. And then that, like I said, all that is like the performing arts section. If you're more interested in technical work, um, directing, that's very important as well. Crew, lighting, audio, just even the intricate details down to like a script supervisor, all of these are very, very important roles but it is very difficult to become an expert in all of them. 
So yes, I think it's a good idea to become a triple threat, but I also think the first goal that people should focus on is honing one craft specifically. And as soon as you get good at that, then you can start focusing on other things because if you get too overwhelmed, you're not going to want to continue. That's a big deterrent for a lot of people is they see all of these different options that they can fall into and then they don't know which one to decide or they figure out that, wow, this is all really difficult. But honestly, while they're difficult, if you put in hard work into one section, then you'll be good at that section. If you put hard work into everything, you're going to get overwhelmed, you're going to get stressed, and you're not going to want to do it anymore. You're going to want to find something else. But yes, focus on one craft and then work on the other things later. That would be my advice. And you mentioned and you first got into it as an eighth grader mm -hmm. but does that does your passion realized at that point or was it before that or when was your passion realized my passion was realized whenever i kind of like, like my the soul. moment that came to you and said i want to do this oh then it was much longer or sorry sorry way way before um eighth grade it was back when i was a little kid um my passion was realized whenever my older brother was an actor um my brother is five years older than me and he used to be an actor and model for a houston agency in um it was page parks here in houston and he got into acting because he was literally walking around a mall with my mom and there was a recruiter that said, hey, that kid looks like he could be a model. So they signed him up and it was just for the wingman. My brother didn't really have any passion in acting or film, he just tried it. But then I came along and I saw like, oh, that's so, that's so cool you get to be in movies. That's really, really cool. If my brother shared the passion for film, well, we'd probably be out like in Hollywood or something right now. But it wasn't for him. It just wasn't his thing. But when he hang up the mantle of being an actor, I'm like, I want to do that really, really bad. And then another big part of my acting realization is that um, I go to the movies a lot and it pains me so much that I can't go right now because of COVID-19. Like I love going to movie theaters, just the popcorn, just the atmosphere is, is something I've been used to my entire childhood because ever since I was little, I have always gone to the movies with my brother and my grandma. I call her my Mimi. It's spelled literally as mean, but I always go with her every single month just to see any movie at all. The first movie I ever saw in theaters was Santa Claus 2. It was so scary to me, I cried and we had to leave because the screen was too big. But ever since then, I have just loved going to the movies. And I've always told my, my Mimi that I love watching these so much. It's about time that I try to start making them. So I feel that with a lot of things. If I surround myself with it enough, eventually I want to start doing it. Same thing with writing books. I think I'm a good writer because I like to read books, but doing it is one thing. Um, it's very different from actually just reading or watching things. But yes, I like to practice and I want to act now that I've watched movies for basically my whole life. Yeah, I... I like going to the movies, especially by myself, like, cause, well, like the by myself part, because if, if I, if I end up like going with someone else mm -hmm. at the end of the movie, I got into this, like doing this way in college after like, but I, I like to sit around after the movie ends and watch the credit scroll. The credits. But no oh, one yeah. else wants to do that. Like I, I try to watch. And like, are you coming? Are you coming? No, like, it's not technically over yet. No, I, I honestly, I'm the same way. I like to see who was making the film because I'm very appreciative of all the different workers 
in a film because they it is a team effort you cannot make a film just by yourself and if you are and you manage to nail it then like you know something that no one else does um and we need to like all worship you or something but yeah it's, it's an extremely big project to work on in a film and you need everyone everyone plays an integral in, in english everyone plays an important part it's very very essential to have even pas production assistants they're like the lowest on the ladder but i've been a pa before and I, i've had directors come up to me and say like you have made this production extremely like efficient today. Like, thank you. But if, if you put in the work and anything you do, it's gonna be noticed and it's gonna be appreciated and you get to feel pride that you put something together and were a part of it. And I think that's just really special with film. I think that's good that you shared that and thank you for acknowledging you for just sharing that and, and for that someone made you feel that pride and made you feel important even though a lot of them oh he's just this or that like I I'm glad that you actually pointed that out yeah for sure because if you can't see the good in the work that you're doing because you think you deserve to be at the top, you need to realize that, no, it's not true. Nobody starts at the top. Very, very, very few people start at the top, I should rephrase. But you need to take pride in each role that you have. You need to be able to see the positive parts of every single aspect you're doing. Regardless of where you feel like you deserve to be, just whatever position you're in, do it to the best of your ability. If you're a PA, be a very good PA. Don't be like, I'm a PA, this is just a step to the next promotion. This is just a step to a director. This is just a step to being an actor of what I want to be. Now, if you want to be in the film industry, you need to want to be in the film industry. And that means you need to want to do what you're doing. If you're hired on as a PA, be a PA. If you're hired to be a grip, be a grip. If you're a script supervisor, be a good script supervisor. Just take pride in your work and it will show. And the higher ups will see that because they were in your position at one point. They know what it's like. So you just have to show that. And and that exactly that goes back to honing in and focusing on the one craft and then going back later and adding, sprinkling in your other exactly. interests later. Like me, I just decided just recently to one thing I really like the video editing post production. I like all that. And I just decided this this is really what I want to focus on. I don't want to find all the video editors. Oh and yeah. Connect with them more. And then later even... I'll I mean I like I like doing the interviews and I, I I'll continue to do this as a way to giving the value back and sharing the value too. I like doing podcast interviews as well, but the video editing is as part of my, I want to grow that as my expertise. Uh, video editing is very, very cool to me. It's also the most complicated part. So video editors, I have to give props to you guys because that is so technical. I couldn't even get my microphone to work for this. Like I could not, I could not edit a video or like a studio quality film. I've tried my hand with Adobe Premiere Pro and I have cried from it because it's so like complicated, but it's interesting at the same time that just studio films have been edited on Premiere Pro and it's, ac it's accessible to anyone. Literally anybody can get it. And then Media Composer is another great one. It's like an industry standard, right? Avid. Or Avid, Avid, Avid. Avid Media Composer? Yeah. Yes, it is very technical and very, very interesting, especially for like, oh, like special effects, CGI, that stuff is amazing. And it's only going to get better. That's the thing. That's another interesting aspect of film. It, it adapts. Like film today is not the same as it was in the 60s or it was in the 40s. It's always going to adapt. And I don't, 
know why it would downgrade like realistic Thanos. He looked like a real person. I don't I don't see how it's going to downgrade. It's only going to get better. And that's another thing I'm also excited for. <clears throat> Had something. Uh... You're talking about video editing. I'm trying to like graphics. come back to like what I was like, where I wanted to I know. I, I wouldn't before. like, I wouldn't like a tangent about Thanos <laughs> or something. <laughs> Seriously, you can get me to talk about Marvel for days. You just like, oh, <laughs> well, it's storytelling, but yeah. Um, let's see if I can't before I video editing, video editing, video editing. Uh, oh, why you what you were mentioning? It was like. It was like really complicated for you, you can uh, and and everything, but the the thing behind that is, and a lot of lot of things are true this way too. There are at least five ways to do anything, and sometimes that can that can I could see how that can be a little. I mean, even for me, I, it can be a little overwhelming. Like. Mm -hmm. do it this way and i'll do it this way it's it's really all preference and there's there's more yeah. than one way to do something and it's just figuring out how what which way works best for you yeah i know like i was i interned in high school at a video production company and i had to make a little short film with this this camera this dslr Ooh. camera like this is like old like my trusty little camera that i've had for years but I had to edit my short film. I had to put that in quotes. I had to edit my sketch in, um, in Premiere Pro. And I never used it before. I was like, I could barely use Windows Movie Maker. And I had to use Premiere Pro. And the way I had to put sequences together and different clips and then mix it with audio, it was so confusing to me and then my mentor was like standing over my shoulder and they're like looking at me and just like it was it was an experience it's but yeah like you said it's like a preference thing there are five different ways to do things in premiere pro it feels like there's a million different ways to do things it's like people pressing control c and control v to copy and paste so when some people right click it's really just a preference. Both ways work. There's a shortcut. You can navigate through the menu. You can, there's, there's an mm -hmm. option to move around on the timeline. It is really interesting though. Like, don't get me wrong. If I ever get a lot of clips together and I want to edit something, I like dabbling around in it. Like I have Premiere Pro. It's fun to use if you understand what you're doing. Um, and I definitely would love to learn more about it. Right now, I'm honing in on that acting, though. Definitely, I, I, you can. I've been, I can consider myself now as expert, and I still have much to learn too. But you, anything you want to know, re consider me an expert on the video editing, and you can come to me for that. Oh, for sure, that's a great thing. I, like, I don't ever believe yeah. that people stop learning. Like, I always want to keep learning. You can be a master at your craft, but there's always something new. There's always something else you can learn. So always, always keep learning. That's really important. Try to build yourself up constantly. Try and get to a few things. If we didn't get to our the meat of the question yet, but Ooh, I, I always like to, I always like to ask this from the reason why I started this podcast up when he, and he got me Lewis Howes if, if you're ever familiar with that in the school of greatness just check that out it's when it's a really good podcast to listen to he, he mm -hmm. brings on a bunch of experts or, or maybe not so much experts but thought leaders per se mm -hmm. and he he's over 600 episodes now 
with all these people he talks to. Wow. It's, it's a great podcast to listen to to learn just everything about life. But anyway, what are you grateful for? Honestly, it's surrounding myself with people that think positively and are not unrealistic. Like they'll be straight up with me, tell me what I need to do next, or they give me sound advice. Um, you cannot deny the impact and the value that having a close relationship um, can do for your career because you can't do it alone. You can try, and if you succeed, then props to you, but it's like really, really difficult. And you need people in this industry. I mean, when people say, um, whenever you're starting out in acting or directing or whatever realm you wanna go into, and they say that it's not what you do, it's who you know, that is true. And if you have close friends with you, they don't even have to be in the film industry. If it's just somebody that lifts you up and gives you confidence, then be really, really grateful for that. If you have family in your life that's supportive of your goals, be grateful for that. I am extremely grateful for my family and friends and all of their support. I cannot do this without them and anyone I meet along the way. Because I like helping people. I like people helping me. And I like collaborative effort, teamwork. It's a very great thing. And speaking from your, I, I know it's been short experience, but what do you think is harder getting started or keeping it going? So overall, probably getting started because this is actually for me personally, it was getting started. I know it's different for a lot of people too. Some people will say keeping up is the, diff is the most difficult person, but it's very subjective. Yeah. And, but for me, it's definitely getting started because there, if you're going to be an actor, the biggest thing people lack in the beginning is confidence and I'm no expert in confidence. I don't have like mountains of confidence, but I at least know my self worth. I like what I do. I don't hate myself for the things I do towards acting. I like criticism. I like knowing what I can improve on but I can handle things like rejection. That's another thing that you have to know um, and you have to accept when you're starting out in acting because if you can't handle rejection, if you lack confidence, then it's gonna be really difficult for you to make it as an actor. And those aren't things that you generally need just for acting. You'll need them in daily life. And I think that's really diff that was really difficult for me to grasp in the beginning. And now I've come to terms with that and I've accepted it and I've grown from it and I'm only excited for the future. So that's why it's a little bit easier for me to keep going because I'm not dreading what comes next. I'm excited for what comes next. I am like a healthy degree of nervous, of course, because when you're acting, you do get nervous a lot. But if you can learn to turn that into something and turn it into excitement, then that's a great thing. So, yeah. I've always heard nervous and excitement are from the two same, are the, are the same two feelings, essentially. Nervous is excitement and excitement is nervousness. Yes, definitely. Um, you can get nervous and get anxious and scared. So there's like a thin line. You can get nervous. Let's say like nervous is like in the center. 
a lot of people branch it off and make it into excitement and then the other half will go into fear and they'll run away so go down the excitement route because that's what's going to take you that's going to take you far if you go down the fear route you're only running backwards if you want something go for it you're going to get nervous everyone will be there's absolutely no way and let like i don't know somebody that doesn't get nervous about something they're passionate about at some point in their their journey but if you're if you're nervous that means something is right that means something new is about to happen and if it if you know it's going to jump you further then go for it take the risk don't ruin yourself but you're not going to help yourself if the only only thing you do is worry about it and then you run backwards in fear. No, go down the excitement route because the worst thing that can happen is just it doesn't work. Then do it again the next time. The next opportunity will come around. Opportunities present themselves all the time. It's just up to you to accept them. That's great, and I I hear you bring up. Lewis has again he he always he he saw something recently people will criticize you for doing something going out and doing it and they're also criticize you for not doing something exactly so i think i think we are our, our own worst critics we judge ourselves the hardest and half the time, a lot of people are not realizing that people are way more worried about what you think of them than to worry about what they think of you. And if you have that realization, you start thinking that, wow, that just leaves me an open door to, to jump on new opportunities to combat nerves, to combat fear, to combat anxiety, to combat like really, really harsh views of yourself. Yeah, I know we all judge ourselves and we all judge ourselves the hardest, but people are gonna do that. That's just a fact of life. You're gonna judge yourself and everyone is going to have their different opinions about what you do and what you don't do. And you can't avoid that. So just accept it and keep moving on. Keep doing what you want to do. Going tra- Transitioning into from going after what you want to actually now taking action. Mm-hmm. Rituals, habits, or like a routine that you get into and you're in a role or you're going to start yeah come in a role so down to specifics if you're preparing for a character as an actor there are some questions that are really important to ask and it actually kind of is similar to um the five questions they asked me in the beginning or the discovering yourself purpose um in five minutes right So those five purpose questions are very good to ask in real life. And they're also very good to ask for a character because when you act, you are not yourself. You are somebody else. You're acting like a new person. And so you need to ask yourself, um, who am I? Um, Things like, where am I? Just like the who, what, when, why, or why, that whole thing that they teach you as far back as elementary school. Then you need to ask yourself, what is my relationship to the character I'm talking to or to the other characters in the story? You need to ask, what do I want? And why do I want it? And how am I gonna get it? These are all very, very important questions that you have to ask in order to embody who you are trying to portray. So I guess that's sort of ritual. It's really just asking a bunch of questions, very inquisitive. You want to get to know your character before you start. 
pretending to be them essentially. So yeah, every single role I prepare for, I ask myself those questions. There's no real formula to it all. There's many different ways you can go about it in terms of like, some people have rituals where they have to like, I don't know, eat five chicken wings before they go on stage or something. I don't know. I'm not like that. No, I don't have like superstitious rituals, but yes, preparation, studying, research. That's what I do. That's what I focus on. So how do you, you, you said to, to get to know the character when, when the character and, and the good actors, actresses, they can all do this. How do you get to know a character when you pretty much have to create, create that said character from scratch? Like when, when you get good at it, you, you see it happening as such when people start watching you, they start and then, and then they, they'll see, they'll see an actor like walk down the street, say, Oh, that's the character's name. That's not him. Cause they don't know the actor themselves personally. Right. They know the character they play. How do you, how do you get to know the character that you just, that doesn't exist yet. You're since you're creating that character. So this is a really good question because this is an actor's playground whenever they get room to actually develop the character themselves. If the director is giving you full on control and they say like, the character needs this, the rest is up to you. There are entire, I have, okay. So I have a list of just hundred, about a hundred questions of random ass shit. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse, but just random stuff for every character of like little tiny questions. Like what's my favorite color? What was I like in high school? Just those types of questions, just to know where they are at different points in their life. And another important thing about characters is that even in real life, look at people in real life, everyone has certain behaviors, certain mannerisms that they do. No two people are the exact same. No one's a clone. So whenever you are portraying a new character, I would not, I would, I would advise to record yourself and then play it back. And if you watch you as this actor and you see yourself, then, then you are yourself just pretending to be somebody else to whenever you're acting, you're supposed to literally be somebody else and you're supposed to think like that person. So pick behaviors is another thing. If you in real life don't have like, say like you blink your eye a lot or you have a twitch. If you have a character and you want to give them a twitch, give them a twitch, pick three behaviors and then go off from that. And then the rest will do. Yeah. It'll like fall into play itself. Honestly, it'll make it up itself. I don't remember who did this. I believe it was, I want to say Angelina Jolie. I don't think it was. It might have been somebody else, but she had an audition and her audition had no lines. All she had to do was walk into a room and she was supposed to improvise as somebody that was angry. So most people, when they go into an audition and they say that like, they go in like, oh, I'm so angry or they start cursing at something. But no, all she did was she walked into a room and there were some props. There was a lamp, there was a piece of paper and then there was an open drawer. So what she did, she walked over to the lamp, swiped it off the table, walked over to the paper, ripped it, and then she went over to the drawer and slammed it shut and walked out. And that was her audition. And she booked the part. And she didn't say a single word. It's behavior. You need to know how to do behavior because 
You don't need words to convey that you're angry. It's all about action. Body language is the other half. And sometimes it's everything. And she literally can just walk in, do three different actions, three different behaviors, and you can already tell that she's angry. You can tell that something is wrong. You can tell that there is a conflict within her. And now you want to know what that is. You want to continue the story. You want to see why did she rip that paper? Why did she just smack a lamp off a table? If she walks in and says, I'm angry and this is why I'm angry, then I mean, there's really no point in continuing. I know why you're angry. What are you going to do about it next? This is a question you might ask, but some people settle for just, all right, now I know why you're angry. But yes, behavior, very important. <laughs> who in, who is your inspiration for for the type of characters or like for like a role who who if the one person maybe it inspired you to get in like I know you, that's that's it actually in the industry currently or a lot of people i mean i can't really narrow it down to one person at the very top but any actor really when you watch them on screen you're gonna take little bits away from it and that will inspire you i've always said um brian cranston is a big inspiration of mine from mouth in the middle from breaking bad he just is an amazing actor he i believe he did a a talk speaking about auditioning and it has really helped me in my auditioning process so he says whenever you go into audition don't expect that you are like the top-notch person in there and that you deserve to get this role you need to go in and if you don't get it then you don't get it it wasn't the job meant for you and have you seen that brian cranston talk before because it is i have not heard about the i'll have to go look look watch it's really it, watch it. yeah but it, it it reminds me of a tv show I, well, not just a tv show one of the biggest that's ever had it had its 10 year span friends no uh, it reminds me of one audition you know joey being an actor he's gone to an audition that he's actually been on the show before and it's like i really have to audition for this well everyone everyone auditions <laughs> and then he just walked out because he didn't want to audition for the part <laughs> no uh, auditioning is its own monster um I don't, I can't, not many people like auditioning, but it is something you have to do. And like I was saying previously, if you don't like it, you still have to realize that it is a step towards something you want to do. So own up to it. Do it to the best of your ability. And if you can master it, then you're pretty you're pretty much set. I know I, Brett Cullen is an actor very well known in Hollywood. And he has told me a story where he went into an audition to play a baseball player. And when he walked into the audition room and he saw all these guys lined up auditioning for the same part, he said every single one of them was wearing a baseball uniform. And he wasn't. And he still got the part. Because a lot of people think that they need to look the part when they go in for an audition. And that's not necessarily true unless you are specifically told to wear something. You don't need to dress up as a baseball player. You don't need to dress up as, I don't know, an astronaut or a cowboy. You just need to behave like one. You need to talk like one. And you need to make it unique. You don't need to do a stereotype. You don't need to speak in a deep southern accent to be a cowboy. You just have to create the character the way you think it wants to be shown, the way you think people will be relating to it. So may, maybe 
you're not getting the auditions, but you, your willingness to get and keep on getting on the sets to keep being seen by people, even if it's not actually in the audition form, how, how big does that help you as not particularly focus on and at that one particular time, but how big is it you think as an actor to when you're just on a set as just a PA? Mm -hmm. So if you're not auditioning and you're not acting, that doesn't mean you're not working. If, because honestly, you can't always act. You do have to audition and sometimes you're not going to get auditions and there's going to be long periods of time where you don't get anything at all, especially in Houston. Houston's not the film capital of the world. If you really want to audition in Texas, like Austin is the place to be going into Dallas. Dallas has a lot more stuff than Houston from what I've seen, but that doesn't mean there's nothing here. But in the time periods where there's no acting to be done because you just don't have any acting work, then there's plenty of other things you can do. You can always be in classes. I think any great actor will tell you that they always, always are in classes. Even well-known Hollywood actors that you know today, that you see, that you think are the best actors in the world, they still take classes. Um, what is that guy's name on Stranger Things? He plays the sheriff. He takes classes still. There's so many actors that take classes and that's what you should be doing when you're not acting in an actual production um, and even then you can still be on set that's time you can use to meet people to form more relationships I, what I like to do is I like to be a PA just to meet people especially when you're starting out it's super easy work you don't need experience to be a PA but if you're home and you're not on set you can be writing. Say you want to hone storytelling, write some screenplays, watch some documentaries, watch some TED Talks, just form different characters in your mind, come up with story ideas, things that you've always wanted to be told. A lot of, a lot of people, yeah. I, I, I've heard them say, well, I don't, I haven't been seeing the script, so I'm going to write something that I would like to be in. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, actually, they do that in some of my acting classes too. It's a really good experience to write your own scripts, write monologues, and then say them out loud. Write a, write a dramatic monologue, write a comedic monologue, see how you do, record yourself. You can always play those back and learn from them. What the tactics do you take when looking for auditions where do you like where do you find them search the social media do you use so, are they in newspapers i've never used a newspaper before classifieds <laughs> classified like um, we, you mentioned your brother like and have, i i've heard this i've heard the ads on radio about be the next Disney Channel star on the radio. <laughs> like things like yeah, that. Yeah. People hear those. I I don't know anybody that has done one of those ads and has successfully become super famous from it. It's probably happened. I don't know. I'm not gonna go that route though. I know um, it's really competitive. Ew. <laughs> Acting is gonna be competitive, but that's also yeah. something you have to accept. And it comes with rejection as well. You may look the part, you may behave like the part, and they may love your audition, but there, there's sometimes people are just better than you. But you may, you may not have that look. You just may, you just don't have the look. Like you're a great look actor, and, and, it, and a lot of times, if you do go in and audition for one part, they will say straight up, "We don't see you as this part, but we think you would be great for this part." That's happened to me before. Um but tactics in terms of getting auditions, going back to like starting out, that was also a like concern of mine. Like I thought I need, in order to get parts, I would need like an agent 
and I don't know how to get an agent without experience. And it's kind of like a catch 22, like a circle. Like, how do you even do this if you can't do that and you can't get that? A lot of auditions will ask for a video reel. And if you are just starting out and you don't have any experience, how are you going to give them a video reel? Like it doesn't work. Like you can't do that. You need, you need their, you need their production in order to put things into your video reel. But then they're also asking you for a video reel, like I'm locked. And a lot of people stop there because they don't think that they can continue. But that's not true. A lot of people will just accept a self-taped monologue as their video reel. They just want to see how you act. But you could, there's plenty of work out there. Backstage has a lot of casting and crew calls. Um, actors access. Now, if you don't want to pay for that, um, same thing with backstage. If you don't want to pay for that, literally Facebook. I found my first role ever, first audition ever, and I booked it from a Facebook post. There are so many Facebook groups, dozens, and depending on where you are, probably even hundreds, like if you're in LA, there are definitely going to be Facebook groups for casting calls. Um, people will always look for extras you don't really need acting experience to be an extra but it's a chance to be on set and meet people um when it comes to agencies like i don't have an agent currently but i know that a lot of productions will specifically send their casting calls to agents specifically instead of putting it out in the open for an open casting call for just anybody um so if you're an actor definitely start out with like Facebook groups. That's what I recommend. That's what I did. And then once you gather up enough experience, then move on to an agency, sign with them and you'll get bigger work. You'll start getting paid work. A lot of things when you start out in acting, it's going to be unpaid. It's going to be non-union. It's a lot of student films. And then some people just make their own. You can put your own reel together. Nobody says that you can't do that. Yeah, there's many different options to get auditions. Some people will even refer you. If you meet on set, they say, hey, I'm working on this project, um, but in like two months, I have another one. You want to help me out on that? Like, sure. I got nothing in two months. I'll do that for sure. Definitely. Get people's information. It's all about who you know. Reach out and, and it's if you, if you reach out with the intention of giving value and not really, not really worry too much what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to, you got, it's got to be somewhere in there, but maybe lost. But intention yeah. of value to people, if you know something or if you want to learn something from them. Yeah, if you can see yourself gaining something from helping somebody, then that's not selfish. That's knowing the worth and the value of forming that relationship. It's like, it goes hand in hand. And sometimes if you develop good friendships, sometimes you just want to give them favors. There's nothing wrong with that as well. Sometimes you just want to help people out because you like their work. You like what they do and you just want to be you just want to, you want, you want to feel good that you helped your friend out. Honestly, that's, I've done that before too. Cause I like surrounding myself in that environment around positive people, around people you feel passionate about who you believe in and who inspire you. So I think that's really good. Go into some different types of emotions here. Uh, some memories that or that emotions that trigger some memories or memories triggering emotion what is a scary moment that you can remember a scary moment well, it goes back to nerves because well they say go down the path of excitement it's not something i always did and there are plenty of times where i ran away in fear from something um there was an audition I did for a short film a couple months ago, sometime last fall. 
um, I had to go all the way up to Austin for it. And I walked in because it was actually a callback. I had sent in a self tape audition because that's what actually a lot of people ask for nowadays. I won't go off on a tangent about it. But yeah, most people ask you to send in a self tape before you actually go in and meet them in person. But I got a call back to go to Austin and I walk into the room and literally everyone in there looked the same. And they were also 10 years older. So I looked like I was like eight in a sea of 40 year olds. And I'm like, how the hell did I get a call back to play the same role as these people? And immediately I got like scared and like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting this. I like, if I'm, if I fail this audition, it's the end of my career. Like they're gonna, they're gonna bash me. They're, it's gonna ruin my reputation because I failed this audition. And no, there's really honestly nothing to be afraid of, but that was super scary for me. It was one of my first ever auditions and I was terrified of not getting it. But, you know, in hindsight, you do need experiences like that sometimes because they help you. You learn from them. You look back on them. They become funny stories. Like a lot of embarrassing moments eventually become funny stories. And it'll get better from here, but I go into a sad memory, sad moment. Sad memory. Well, I mean, there's always the sad moment when you don't get a part that you did want. Um, I mean, and as an actor, there are many times where you'll have to convey sadness towards your character. Um, but honestly, I have only been in it a year. There haven't been many sad memories that come to note. I'm sure that I probably will get some though. But nothing that comes to mind. Not at the moment anyway. How about a happy memory that really uh, sticks with you? Happy memory is being on set for the first time. And not for my first era production, but actually with that internship in high school. So way back in high school, in my junior no it was my senior year the first semester of my senior year i was in a class that had you require um to find a mentor in a field that you're passionate about that you're interested in pursuing and i obviously chose film i interned with a video production company that had their own studio and I remember walking into that studio for the first time as a new intern and feeling extreme joy. Like, cause it was like the first fundamental step I ever took to actually pursuing acting. Cause before that internship, I'd always thought of it. I'd always been like, oh, I really want to do this. I, but I don't know how, I don't know where to get started. It's all about who you know, like you won't be able to succeed or get any success unless you actually know people from Hollywood. That's not true. I've met more people than I ever could have imagined in just a year, in just a month of acting. Yeah, walking onto that, into that studio for the first time, I was extremely happy because it felt like, like the first step and it's only gone up from there. And it has me excited for the future. Yeah, here in the background, I, I again stopping. My, I have one more of these questions for the emotions, but I I heard the. I think you have a little dog. I heard them in the background. We're, we're in the going through the quarantine of the COVID nineteen pandemic. We're all quarantined. We're all. We're all. I don't want to say stuck in the house from it sense of the we, we are stuck mm. in together with the dogs and Ooh. all emotions that are might going be him. haywire right now so that's what's going on that's that's the current situation <laughs> so, right 
a little understanding <laughs> with being in in the midst of a pandemic. But yeah, that that's leads dog, into the last of the emotional moments, funny moment. Funny moments. That bloopers are really, really fun. Developing relationships with your fellow co-stars. I on the first film I did for for Wolves, um, my co-star basically is like my best friend now. And it, it was so fun to run lines with her and then perform in front of the camera with her and then just laugh whenever you messed up a line or something. Just, I like cherish those moments and I can't wait to have them with more people and forming those relationships, like I said, and outside of work or acting is just spending time with those people. They're fun. They're funny. Many funny moments where I'm crying, laughing. And the funny thing is also, I can't tell you what I was laughing about. I just remember laughing, having a good time. It's been grateful, even though like we had to, to start this, we had the technical issues, and I think yeah, it's like I'll I'm just go back that. and do some major editing to like see to smooth a little thing, smooth some things over. But it was grateful to connect with you. Grateful to that I uh, saw you somehow show up in my feed and said, and I was. I was. I think one day I just go, was going through. It was a storyteller group. On a, a, if you're in the storyteller Facebook group, and I was just reaching out to people because I'm I'm looking to book guests and all. Mm -hmm. But before I get into some th th three final questions, I like to I, best way to contact social media. Your favorite place to hang out on social media well uh, i thought you were about to say in person because unfortunately you can't hang out anywhere in person at the moment but yeah you can follow my instagram it's just christian hudspeth 29 or check me out on facebook christian hudspeth um, i'm reachable i love talking to people so if you want to hit me up on there that's fine perfect and thank you for having me it's been very fun. I love talking about film. I go on tangents a lot, but this, oh, that's the tangents are great. If you can do, it, I, I asked for it. <laughs> yeah, I saw in parts of this, you you really started to like light up when talking about certain things too. I saw it. it you went from the straight face to you just all of a sudden I saw it light up. So I knew. I know, like sometimes just about random stuff, I'll get like scatterbrained and I'm, like talking about one sentence and I get like an idea like, ooh, I gotta go talk about this. I'm, like, wait, what was I talking about a second ago? I do that all the time. Man, it's tangents. Problem. Tangents <laughs> help to, to figure out, it's learn healthy, about and yourself. I, and I talk to myself. And apparently, there's been that scientific studies. That is really studies. healthy talking. There's to scientific yourself. studies that talking to yourself is good for your mental health so talk to yourself all you want make weird noises to yourself all you want and don't worry about other people judging you because it's a sign of that means, a genius exactly that means you're a smart person you have a big brain so content you have located that uh, proud not proud like <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're i know you're proud of your own work you have I to, mean, uh, there's some uh, early work that I kind of Vimeo. Right away, but Wolves, that's the first film that I did last August. Um, during the whole COVID-19 crisis, post-production has been delayed on it, but it will come out. And it's coming out this year. I'm very excited for it. It's going to be going to a few film festivals before it reaches into the public. But as soon as that comes out, I'm definitely going to be announcing it to everyone, telling everyone. 
where it's going to be, and I cannot wait to see it. Um, a few other short films that I'm working on is I'm writing one right now. It's called Hogs. It is a campy horror film. It's going to be really interesting. I have my friend working on that. Um, and then right now, we're also filming another film called Race by Kanye. It's a comedy, kind of like a lifestyle comedy. Right now, that's in principal photography, but that should be wrapped up hopefully this year, and then we'll be getting that out to the public soon. So three films working currently, and always going to be in classes, always going to be auditioning, always looking for the next thing, always keep working and keep grinding. So that's where I'm at right now, currently. Well, right now, currently, we're in a crisis, like a pandemic. It has limited a lot of our work, but that doesn't stop. Yes. Right. I think I touched on all the points. There's something I probably forgot. Oh, well, it'll come back to me in like two days. And and anything you did forget about, I'll ask, I'm going to ask for like your social media and links. Yeah, of course. So Feel YouTube free. channel. All the links that you, that you mentioned to, to the film festival that, you, that you're going to be submitting to, what's going, what you're going to be submitting. I want, I want all those. I would, I links. will definitely try to find the links to the film festivals. I don't know them. Or the that's going to be up to the director. The things you're working on too. The links, to the, at least those somehow. Yeah, like I can send my the IMDb links to them or something like that. But. I need to check on the film festivals. I'm not sure which ones are going to. I know it's probably going to be in Texas, Texas-based film festivals, a lot in Austin, a lot here in Houston. Um, if it goes to LA, I'm not sure if it's going to LA or Atlanta. It may um, end up being like a virtual thing. It could be. I know that whenever Wolves comes out, there will be a screening, but I think that's just for like cast and crew and like close family members. But I mean, as soon as I get that information, I'm going to be blasting it everywhere. People will know about it. The cast and crew is going to be blasting it everywhere. We're going to make it known. And I can't wait. All right. These next three, final three that I like to keep off the prepared question list to get okay. you thinking a little bit. And the last one is comes from inspiration again from that other podcast I named earlier. Mm. First one, what do you want to learn from or that, that learn from who has been successful in the industry? Like if you gave me an opportunity to like have my dream person come and teach me? Yes. Oh, that is... You see, that kind of question is like picking. That's really difficult. There's so many and it's hard to narrow it down. Because there's also many different things I'd like to learn. And there's many different teachers that can teach that. I think that Martin Scorsese could teach me a lot. I would be extremely intimidated to talk to him, though. I know that for certain. I would be scared. I would be nervous, but you're in the middle of a great opportunity. So definitely really excited jump, on it. Route. <laughs> jump on it. I mean, it's Martin Scorsese in front of you. You're not going to be able to talk to him if you're running away from him. So, or if he just, or if he just like says, no. mute. <laughs> exactly. Like starstruck. Oh man. I've been starstruck before meeting celebrities it's ugh. you touched on this in the beginning and that's when i was like he's watched he's listened to an episode before why do you think the film industry is important in our world why do i think the film industry is important in our world because that again a lot of different answers to this so i'm focused on just what it is very culturally driven and it adapts a lot and it's realistic. People like to relate to it. Um, for example, 
films kind of mirror where society is in its current time. Like Citizen Kane is not the same movie as Captain America. That's not, they're, they're completely different films. But at the times they were created, they were culturally significant to the audience that they were performing for. You, going back even further, the first films weren't even made for entertainment. They were made for educational purposes. Like the first actual movie by, by Moybridge was a horse running. It was literally like, like almost like a PowerPoint slide just clicked really fast of a horse moving for some students at Stanford. That was the first technical film and it wasn't for entertainment purposes, but eventually they started using it for entertainment purposes, especially as Edison patented a lot of motion picture technology and creating some. And people would pay just to see what's the equivalent of a modern day GIF or GIF now. What do you want to call it? And they would be like awestruck by it. They'd be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. How, 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 how do you make pictures move? Whereas if you made that today, people would be like, what is this garbage? But still, audiences appreciate what you make. And I think I'm going on tangent again because I already forgot the question. But still, it's really, really cool how movies adapt with the culture and where we are in our society and generations. Because I'm really interested to see where film's going to be in 50 years, whether even movie theaters are still going to be open or everything is going to go on like online streaming services because the industry is always changing. You have to learn to adapt to it. Social media, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, those are all very new things and it's not going away. Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch, it's, yeah, YouTube. YouTube is huge. It's like part of a lot of people's everyday life now and it's only going to get bigger before it gets worse if, if even uh, i wouldn't acknowledge you i you've you've shared a lot of like knowledge and like that you you have maybe you don't think you have so much but clearly you have a bunch and there's like i said before you lit up and at times when talking about things, you go off on tangents when they're good. <clears throat> and acknowledging you for stepping into as an actor and you're, I, I see you as like a, a renaissance man in, in the entertainment world. You, you seem like you're a student of the game. So I want to acknowledge you for taking, taking <laughs> acting in and, and learning and learning all you can thank you i appreciate that <clears throat> it's and, definitely an interesting road and i love it and it can be very fun if you just put put your heart into it oh for sure 100 percent. i i like to call this i'm still like i'm making these little tweaks on this list, but i like to call this your story I don't know. Uh, perfect ending. It sounds kind of like ultimate, but it's your perfect ending to your story. Right. And years down the line, you've done everything you want to do. And you've seen, you, you met people, you've taken on the roles you want to do what is where do you see yourself in as in your perfect ending to your story your life where do you what happened that perfect day like how do you see that perfect day that it, it has to be your last I mean, and you're at the age you want to be right you've done everything where what's your perfect ending per perfect how i say it's a perfect ending that day it's the day that I can finally 
look back and say, I've done all that I can and I'm happy with what I've done. I think, or I envision myself not always acting, to be honest. Um, I definitely see majority of my career spent in the film industry, if not all of it. Um, but by then I don't, I don't wish for something like fame. Like I don't do it for fame because mini tangent. If you, if you do acting just to become famous, it's very difficult. It's a fool's errand to chase fame because a lot of fame just comes with luck or with people or connections that you know. Go on. Oh, hold on. But going back to where I envision myself, I want to be on a ranch. I know that. Like I want a house with land, maybe a pool with a few benches or like a little koi pond or something. And I want to have written some books, um, written some movies. And I want to have created something that is timeless that stays where it is in its place in history. However small it may be to the public, I just want to create something that I can confidently say, this is my magnum opus, this is my masterpiece, this is my baby, this is what I can die with and feel happy about. And the best thing about that is nobody even nobody has to like it. It might be the most hated thing in the world, but if I love it and I feel happy and content about it, then I'm going to feel complete. Would it be nice if everyone loved it? Of course. Yeah, definitely, for sure. But it's just, I want to have that piece of art. I want to create something that I'm happy about and I take great pride in and something that I can pass down to many people down the line after I'm gone. That's what I feel like I envision myself doing in the future at the very end of the road. I mean, the road goes on, but the party never ends. That's a song, I think, maybe. Right? Yes. I've heard it before. Go to, to go beyond your physical presence and to be thought of and remembered as... Pablo Picasso or a Michael Pablo Yeah, uh, to, to leave a legacy, however small or big it may be, I just want it to be one that I'm happy with at the time of my death or at the time of my retirement. Let's say retirement. It's a little less morbid. I don't want to die. <laughs> well, the first step is to know where you want to go. And now it's to go and set out and do it all. Exactly. And I wish wish you the best in getting there and knowing that. And now it's they, they, I always say reverse engineer. You know mm -hmm. the ending, now to work backwards from that. Exactly. It's a very good formula to follow. Very good. Well, thank you for having me. I also wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Continue what you're doing. Stay safe during this pandemic crisis. We will get through it, though. It's not the end for any of us. Feelings are mutual. <laughs> Same to you. And until next time, I uh, have you on when you when you become <laughs> the next. When you have a bigger uh, have a the bigger role and then the next big role i'll have you back on bigger role and talk about i'll tell you all about and... next time i become the next superhero or something or not a bigger role just a bigger <clears throat> project because you're always the if you're not growing then what are you doing you're not right. getting to that end spot so grow get bigger always have something to share right yeah right 
Yeah, I get that. Well, so, I look forward to the next time then. It's going to be exciting. Because we get to look back on this. Definitely. And we'll talk soon. And... <laughs> Stopped recording.